And we're back for another Pico CTF challenge. Now we have the general skill task, Magikarp Ground Mission. And I was trying to figure out why it's called Magikarp Ground Mission. And the nearest I can tell is based on the description, do you know how to move between directories and read files in the shell, start the container, SSH to it, and then LS, once connected to begin, log in via SSH as CTF player with the password, that password. So unfortunately, I already started my instance. Otherwise, uh, I would be able to show you, you click here. Actually, sure, we'll, we'll restart it. So I, I clicked start the instance, not restart. And then you get one hour and you're given this endpoint to you. So SSH stands for secure shell. And it's the way a lot of things are administered. And if you're new to it, it's very intimidating because it's a terminal, it's not a graphical user interface. And so I think they're talking about Magikarp is a fish Pokemon and it can't do anything on the ground. Much like a new person can't do anything in the shell and they just flail around. So I think that's the reference. So uh, if you are on Windows, you're going to have to uh, use putty, which I'll spell out in the notes below. But since we're on Linux, we will just paste that in. So here's how you read it. We're performing SSH. We are the CTF player, that's our username, at venus.picoctf.net is the host, so the, uh, the IP that you're gonna connect to. Minus P tells the port, and we're gonna use port 54792. So let's go ahead and connect. And remember how I said this was a secure shell. Well, it's secured by public key cryptography. And one of the things that we're doing is we're establishing a secure connection. And we think we know who we're talking to, but we're not 100% sure because we're going across the internet and anybody could get in between us and our ultimate destination. Because uh, in typical networking fashion, you have many computers between you and your destination. And so that, that's called being man in the middle, meaning somebody intercepts your traffic and they interact with you and uh, you, you don't know the difference. So what's happening here is we're presenting an identity and typically you would wanna know this fingerprint beforehand. So if you were connecting to say Mike's server, I would give you this fingerprint and you can think of it as a name, a name that's cryptography, cryptographically strong and can't easily be spoofed by other people. And if the name was different than what you expected here, you would be suspicious. And if it matched, you would feel good. So we're going to accept this fingerprint and try to connect. Now we're prompted, you can see for the password, which we know from over here, most of this challenge is uh, all about learning how to use the command line, as, as I said. So I'll try to go at a reasonably slow pace and explain all the uh, commands I use. You get a banner on logging in typically that just tells you kind of what's going on with the server and what's up. Now we're gonna wanna see what's in our directory right now. So we're gonna do a listing, which is LS, short for listing. And we can see we have two files. We have this one of three flag.txt and instructions to get to the next one. So we're going to use cat, which uh, is, essentially printing the output. We're gonna use tab. See how I only had the, the one and then I hit tab and it completed everything for me. Tab completion is really nice. We're gonna use it a lot. So let's see what's in this file. Okay, it looks like the first third of our flag. So let's grab that and we'll put it over here. Perfect. And let's use cat again. And we're gonna look at the instructions and see how to get to the next location. So next, go to the root of all things, more succinctly slash. So Linux file systems, and we're on a Linux machine right now, if we did uh, a uname, this, this is asking what is the machine that we're on? What, what is its operating system and, and other specifics? You'll see it's Linux, it'll tell you it's an Ubuntu variant. So this is a server they spun up for us, and it's a Linux server. So that means if you look at, um, I'm gonna run a, a PW, my terminal froze, I'm not sure why. There we go. So. Uh, I ran a PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory, and that shows you what directory you're currently in. So you can see on a Windows machine, it would normally look something like C drive, colon user, colon mic, colon desktop. So uh, in that system, the drive is the root or, or the base of this file system tree. But on a Linux machine, it's slash, and you'll notice it's forward slash rather than backslash. So when people talk about the root, they either mean the root of the file system, or there's also a root user that we'll talk about later. So I'm gonna do a CD because it said, go to the root of all things. So I wanna change directory. So going from slash home CTF player, my current directory, I wanna to go to slash, and we wanna do a listing to see everything that's in here. And we can see there's flag two of three. So let's use cat to print it out. And we've got the next portion of our flag. Cool, all right, bring that over. And then finally, we have instructions to get to the next portion. 
and it says lastly ctf player go home more succinctly tilde and so i'm going to cd tilde and then i'll explain what this is doing so i'm going to change directory to tilde which is a special variable for my home directory so i, I want to show you the path we're in so sorry i went too fast uh, i did a listing and we can see the final flag but first i want to show you what the uh, the current working directory is so i did a print working directory and you can see i'm in slash home slash ctf player and everybody who can log in has um, a home directory in slash home and that's where you can put all of your your things you'll find for example you have things related to your sshing in uh, so i did a listing and i listed hidden files with a that's what you're seeing with all the dots and uh yeah it's it's just it's the same as your user directory in a windows machine so let's take a look at that final flag and, and tilde is the special way to get immediately to your home and there is the final portion of our flag and i just have one more thing i'd like to show you going back to the fingerprint and talking about the unique identity of each server i'd like to show you what happens now on my Kali machine all right so i submitted it uh, it's going slow it'll it'll get there eventually uh, so we're going to exit and you can see how my prompt changed i'm no longer ctf player at pico challenge now I'm user at Kali VM, so I'm back on my desktop. And what I'd like to show you is, since I accepted venus.picoctf.net and I accepted its fingerprint, that weird long string, now you see I don't get prompted and asked if I'm willing to accept it. So what actually happened there? Well, if you go into tilde, so again, I'm, I'm on a Linux machine, so I, I wanna go into my home and I wanna go into this .ssh directory, which is everything, all my configuration related to SSH. And then if we do an ls we see there's this known host file and let's take a look at it cat known hosts and we can see we have an entry now and what this is is this is a fingerprint that we've accepted and so if we were to remove this so i'm going to just uh, make this an empty file now and i'll show you by catting it again or printing so known host is now empty now i'm going to try that ssh once more and we're going to be prompted again so i hope you have some understanding of how ssh works how to move around the terminal and all that good stuff, please like and subscribe. Thanks, bye.